By the 1970s, the era of total dominance by the big three national networks was coming to an end. The CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. In Washington, at the White House. The TV audience would soon have more choices. You hit it with the hammer. Right, Bullwinkle! Cable held enormous potential, but it didn't yet have many programs. They were looking for programming. There weren't 500 channels out there. You were lucky to have 20 or 30 channels. Technological breakthroughs involving cable TV, pay-per-view, and national cable networks linked by satellite were emerging. And in 1978, there was a superstation breakthrough. These new demands create a steady challenge for the commission. The FCC's open entry decision allowed cable carrier systems to distribute distant signals, meaning they could take transmissions from local TV stations and show them outside of their home cities, all via satellite. So there was a satellite company called United Video out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. What the heck is United Video? A man named Roy Bliss in Tulsa, Oklahoma saw an opportunity. When did United Video get its, its, its start? How, does, how did it get formed? Well, it was formed by uh, some entrepreneurs who were trying to bring distant signals uh, from Chicago down into central Illinois, where they were just starting to build cable systems. Handpicked three local television stations WOR in New York. This is television station WOR-TV in New York City, transmitting on Channel 9. WTBS in Atlanta. You're watching Superstation WTBS, Atlanta. And WGN uh, Television in Chicago, and they put them on their satellite service. Unbeknownst to WGN-TV, found out by accident. The law did not require United Video to have the Tribune Company's permission to distribute WGN signal to out-of-town markets. The station really didn't have any control over it. Because WGN's owner, the Tribune Company, didn't grant permission to United Video, the relationship was described as being not particularly friendly. I had meetings frequently with the WGN guys, and <laughs> a strange, very strange uh, relationship there. The conservative newspaper company was leery of cable, and the Tribune even attempted legal challenges to stop the retransmission of WGN signal. Signal being picked up across the country by cable systems and uh, even into Canada. In 1974, I was named president of WGN Continental Broadcasting Company. But publicly, WGN president Dan Picaro said Channel 9 was, quote, very honored it was selected by United Video. He, however, promised WGN would always continue to serve our Chicagoland communities. It made it an exciting thing for the station to have this national presence as a local station, but also it was a good thing for the cable companies. Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers return in the bar. Because it gave them some programming that they didn't get other places. For 11 years afterward, the national WGN-TV signal carried the exact same programming schedule as the one seen in the Chicago area. WGN not only was Chicago's home station, but it took Chicago to the world. We, those of us who work here, were responsible for allowing people elsewhere in the world to have an understanding about Chicago and this city. With WGN News on a national platform. But more importantly, what to look for. And one of the era's most unsettling mysteries unfolding in Chicago. The tragic story of the Tylenol murders continues to unfold in the Chicago area. WGN's coverage of the Tylenol murders had an impact on national policy. The police were out for 24 solid hours, making sure that it was off the shelves. This was a national crisis. President Ronald Reagan ordered the FBI to get involved. It was because of WGN had just gone, it just become a superstation. People all over the country were getting the wall-to-wall -wall coverage that WGN was providing. First thing my daughter said is, Mom, look at that. Those are those tablet, the capsules they've been talking about. They were getting really in-depth reporting about what was going on here, just more than they would get on the soundbite on national news. The task force is composed of local, state, and federal investigators who are manning phones and following up on leads that may help them trace the origin of the cyanide. WGM was showing the images of police cars driving through the streets of Arlington Heights over the bullhorn saying, throw out your Tylenol. Do not take Tylenol until further notice. What would have been like a Chicago story, right, or a Midwest story becomes this huge national story. I remember when uh, Bill Clinton came, we were out at, at a location with him, and I walked over and I asked one of his press guys, I said, 
I think I can get a one-on-one -on -one with him. And so he said, I'll go check. And he came back and says, you sure you can? He always watches WGN and he knows who you are. I do. I watched uh, a lot of Cubs games, a lot of Bulls games, and a lot of movies on Channel 9. <laughs> this is WGN Channel 9 Chicago. Our transmitter is located on top of the John Hancock building. In addition to the news, there were other key reasons the satellite system picked WGN to be a superstation. There was three things that attracted people to WGN TV across the country that they know they could get. It was... But then you were smart. You yeah. went out and you got this nice... <laughs> Bozo, the Cubs, and Phil Donahue. And really a lot of our local programming. And by that point, people were starting to get to know Tom Skilling. In winter, you can get piles of ice. The days are... Tom Skilling's extensive and accurate forecasts earned him a reputation as the nation's most trusted meteorologist. Up here in the southern Alaskan mountains. Watched by farmers, commodities traders, air traffic controllers, and travelers every night. It's in major weather events of the century. Meantime, the Cubs with lovable ringmaster Harry Carey at the microphone. And a big crowd on hand on a beautiful day were the only baseball team on TV during the day and earned a legion of fans across the country. That's how the Cubs became America's team. It was an alternative to the daytime soap operas offered by the traditional networks. What happened was the biggest soap opera in afternoon television turned out to be the Chicago Cubs. Bob Vorwald, WGN's longtime director of production, oversaw WGN sports broadcasts. The Cubs and the Superstation unintentionally became this huge marriage. Lower third over what? Over red? You take A back one more time. So now you've got a winning team in 84. Cubs are the champion! The Cubs are the champion! Games available around the world on the Superstation and Harry with the biggest stage possible and the whole thing went into the stratosphere. Beamed across the country and around the world, WGN was an internationally known TV station. People watched WGN from all over this hemisphere. Especially in the Central American country of Belize, where the WGN signal was one of just a few channels available. Those lovable losers. I went scuba diving in Belize. I looked around and there was a crew a local Belizean television crew. They wanted to interview me because I was from WGN. A visit from anchorman Bob Jordan prompted a sort of Belizean Beatlemania. That was a huge event for them to have me in their country. I was going, what, me? <laughs> but that's just how WGN was. Ready, three. By the mid-1980s, most of the country could see WGN. If you lived in Detroit, or wherever you lived, you could, you could pick them up. You could get that. And my, my parents, of course, were happy that they could see their daughter on TV. Keep your toes there behind the yellow line. You throw ping pong balls into each one of the buckets. The Bozo Show, already a Chicago institution, became one of the nation's favorite kids shows with the world's most famous clown. The following is a WGN-TV sports presentation. And in 1989, WGN added the world's most famous athlete to the lineup. When a role model like Michael in Chicago. <laughs> He's great. Hey. There's Michael. All right. Nose. Michael Jordan was just on the verge of becoming a global phenomenon as the Bulls were emerging as a championship contender. We're back to close things out in the Bulls' eye right after this. The Superstation gave the biggest superstar in sports a platform to be seen nationally Watch the Bulls on WGN. On a regular basis. You damn commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Having Michael on WGN was an incredible showcase. Well, we're a five-time champion going for six. If we never win another one, we're certainly going to win the sixth one. There were some unintended consequences. Some things were funny. Like, we had an advertising issue with McDonald's where they were going to pull their spots on WGN because they were selling the McJordan burger in Chicago, but people would see the game on the Superstation and try and order it in Portland, and they couldn't get it. The McJordan special, now it's back in town. Get ready for baseball. Sweet Chicago baseball. In 1990, the White Sox returned to WGN, bringing more Chicago baseball to a national audience. Opening day, April 9th on Channel 9. Into the 2000s, WGN's Superstation format remained stable, a mix of syndicated programs, movies, Chicago sports, and news. 
thought the final Cubs-related telecast seen on the Superstation was the 2016 World Series Championship Parade, seen by millions in person and around the country on WGN. WGN America has something really big going on. In the waning days of the Tribune Company's ownership, the Superstation was rechristened as WGN America. WGN. WGN. WGN America. WGN America. Executives wanted it to become a standalone cable channel with national appeal. We welcome our viewers who are watching us around the country on WGN America. So WGN America stopped showing Chicago news, Chicago sports, and any Chicago-centric special programs. And the kissable Tom Skilling is here. Oh, are you nice? Uh, Micah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Seven escape slaves. You ever think about another life? Is there more? Instead, it became a conventional basic cable station. Find out on Salem Season 3, premiering Halloween week on WGN America. Presenting a variety of syndicated and original scripted programs. You're in violation of the Federal Espionage Act. Thank you for welcoming us into Next Star Nation. In 2019, Next Star Media Group acquired Tribune Media. And in 2020, Nexstar relaunched WGN America as a national news network called News Nation. Some of which is produced out of the WGN studios in Chicago today. Starting March 1st, WGN America becomes News Nation. We have to apologize at the top of that story. You, didn't, you may have heard a little noise, but we had a little technical difficulty, but I hope you got to enjoy that. It's also on uh, WGNTV.com if you want to check it out. Yeah, pretty amazing uh, history there. Coming up next on WGN at 75, Mike will look back at the career of former WGN sports anchor Wendell Smith, who broke barriers in baseball and broadcasting. And we'll have special coverage every Thursday night through April on the WGN News at 9. Also a special section of our website devoted to stories about the 75th anniversary. You'll be able to hear the one we just played without <laughs> interruption at WGNTV.com slash 75.